Now, I'd like to start off with just a few simple questions. On a scale of one to 10, from one being, I know absolutely nothing about this topic, to 10 being, Psh, I know this like the back of my hand, I want you to rate yourself based on how well you understand how a flashlight works. Now, can you explain to me in great detail the function of a flashlight? If I didn't know anything about what a flashlight was, can you explain to me, step by step, what a flashlight is, what a flashlight does, and how a flashlight works? Now, rate yourself again from one to 10. How well do you understand how a flashlight works? Did your rating just go down? I know mine did because, well, this is how a flashlight works. And I'm pretty sure for many of us, we thought it worked something a lot more like this. You push a button and then there's light. Similarly, if I were to ask you to rate your understanding of how well a toilet or a zipper or even a ballpoint pen worked, your first thought will most likely have been, of course we know how this works, we use it every day. But once I asked you to think about it and explain to me in depth how it works, most of you have probably already changed your perception of how well you understood this topic. Scientists call this the illusion of explanatory depth. What it does is basically just exposes our natural ignorance and the simple fact that oftentimes we think that we understand things to a much greater extent and with much greater precision than we actually do. These are things that we use on a daily basis, but we never really took the time to just think about what it is that we're using and how it's capable of doing what it does. This doesn't only apply to objects, but concepts as well. A study was done where participants were asked to rate themselves based on how strongly they felt about a certain public policy, like taxes or healthcare. But as soon as they were asked to explain their understanding as to the results of implementing those policies, all of a sudden, the intensity of their stance on the policy declined. Why? Because asking them that simple prompt why it made them think and it helped them recognize that although they thought they were passionate about that topic they actually didn't even really understand the topic remember our four-year-old selves when we were actually driven by our curiosity to understand how everything worked and we asked so many questions and no matter what answer we got we just asked why over and over again so many times that it annoyed all the people in our lives but we still cared about the answers that we got and we learned of course it's understandable that we are asking less questions now because we've acquired a lot more knowledge to be able to formulate answers on our own but that doesn't mean that there still isn't room for learning instead of just assuming that we understand things we actually don't this is the illusion of explanatory depth. It's a bias that we all possess and it plagues all of us. Students, teachers, scientists, politicians, the person sitting right next to you. We all have this sort of overconfidence within ourselves that we often don't recognize. And unfortunately, this is causing us to be misled. What we're actually doing is mistaking our ability to recognize something's logical process for our ability to actually understand, to criticize, and ultimately to explain. When we think of a flashlight, we know what its purpose is, to provide light. But we're mistaking that for our ability to actually understand how it's able to provide light. Here's another more personal example I'm sure many of us can relate to. Tess, you know when you listen to everything in class, you're able to do the classwork no problem, and so your teacher tells you that you have a test coming up. You're pretty confident in yourself because you've been listening to everything that's been happening in class. But then you get your test, 
and you look at the first question, and this is you. It was hard, we did not expect a test like this. Why? Because of the illusion of explanatory depth. Number one, we were overconfident. But although we understand the basic concepts that we are taught in class, that doesn't justify whether we fully comprehend them and can explain them or not. While we were studying, we may have felt that we understood, but we actually didn't because taking notes is proof of reading, but explaining will be your ultimate proof of understanding. That leads me on to my next point, which is that we're focusing way too much on memorization. But memorizing concepts, again, isn't proof of real understanding. Only by trying to explain these concepts can we really identify whether we understand them to the fullest extent. It's like when you breeze through the multiple choice, but then you struggle at the first short answer question you see because you don't know how to answer it. That is the glaring indication of memorization without any explanation, where we overestimated the extent to which we thought we understood. And that's because explanations are different than just quick facts. Explanations have layers. Understanding that a flashlight required a switch and a battery to function is one thing. But understanding that when you press that switch, it makes contact with two metal strips that trigger a flow of electricity from the batteries was another. So how do we make sure that we never have this kind of reaction to your test again? This leads me to the Feynman technique, named Dr. Richard Feynman, who is actually a Nobel Prize winning physicist. He was actually called the great explainer because well, I guess he was good at explaining things. He created this concept to help us learn, explain things simply through explanation. What Feynman did to master his exams back in the day was this. He took out a fresh notebook, and across the cover he wrote, notebook of things I don't know about. And then he followed four simple steps. Number one, he chose a topic that he was interested in. And then he acquired some more knowledge about the topic. And then he pretended that he was a teacher. And he pretended teaching the information he just learned to someone else. And then he reviewed, revisited any course material, filled in any gaps in his learning. And finally, he simplified the information, which is the most important step. He believed that if he couldn't take any idea and explain it to any audience, he actually didn't really understand it. So if you can't explain it simply, you actually don't understand it well enough because your problem areas would normally be the areas where you pause or can't find the right terminology. So by the end of it, he could take any complex, complicated idea, even quantum physics, and break it down so that you and I could understand it. Simply put, the Feynman technique is one way to help us understand concepts much, much more effectively. But isn't there another way to ensure that we actually understand things? What we've learned to do ever since we've been four years old? Asking questions. Asking why again, and being genuinely curious. Let us recall that curiosity from within our four-year-old selves by learning to question things around us until we genuinely understand. I'm not saying being curious just means going to the bathroom and examining your toilet to see how it works. Well, you can if you want to. But I'm saying let our curiosity drive us to ask more questions. Ask for more explanations. Learn to test your understanding of things because that way we can really build on our expertise and not just learn, but learn a lot more efficiently. So the next time that you think you're passionate about something, take a step back and think about why. And the next time you encounter an unfamiliar fact while studying, ask yourself, what does this even mean before going on to memorizing it? Let's take this first step to ensuring that we aren't mistaking our ability to recognize for our ability to actually understand, so that ultimately we can work to combat the solution of explanatory depth.